Hi, everyone. Welcome to this Friday's Giga Rambles. Welcome to us talking about Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah. You guys want to talk about Q episodes? Oh. No. All right, cool. We're doing it live. We don't know if we're live or not. If we are, no. we love you and welcome to the show. We were just talking about John Delancey. Yeah. Oh, we are live. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's us. All right, good. Yay. Yay. Cool. All right, so. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Happy Friday. Yeah. We made it. We, we did it. Another week down. Uh, so... We have a bunch of new releases this week. A lot of stuff uh, on the table today. I, I love when Games Workshop says, oh, hey, we're releasing uh, stuff now twice a month instead of every week. Right. Uh, they're like, yeah, but we're still going to release stuff every week of the month, though. Um, so Games Workshop came out swinging with a bunch of new products that we'll be talking about later, um, as well as Fantasy Flight Games and uh, War Games Atlantic. We have some pretty exciting stuff. Yeah. And then we also have some uh, industry news. Uh, that's going on uh, right now. Uh, it's actually pretty pretty popping in on fire. Yes, so, as of yesterday, I yeah. think is when. Yeah. So let, let's let's do industry news first. Industry news. Da, 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 da. We looked like camera three. Yeah, yeah. Today in industry news. Um, so uh, the big the big news that came out yesterday, um, which was my day off, so I completely missed it until Zach came in and informed me. I'm all, I'm always finger on the pulse. I know what's happening. Yeah. I'm Apparently, uh, Games Workshop announced that they will not be doing a second print of Cursed City. That's right. Now, this is contrary to what they said originally, saying that Cursed City was going to be reprinted um, or in the core catalog for the time being. Uh, and this change is not a, like, try to pull the rug out from underneath you. It is simply done because of logistics and problems that have happened over the last couple months. I'm looking at you, Ever Given. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, unfortunately, with production level, uh, schedules being limited as they are, and the fact that Games Workshop is trying to meet a schedule that they have had planned for probably several, several years and is already delayed, um, they are going to basically not have the time and opportunity to reprint Curse City. Uh, so, mm -hmm. That has upset a lot of people, especially a lot of people that have missed out um, on getting the Curse City. Um, I think we still have a couple copies left, so if you're interested in it... I see four from right here. It is, it is probably definitely time to contact the store and put yours on reserve or pay for it over the phone, which would be even better. Um, it will basically be first come, first serve for what we have remaining. Um, I know it's not great news uh, to get that, especially with a product as anticipated as Curse City, yeah. Um, but it is currently the time we live in right now where we have to um, adjust our expectations and kind of go with the flow. Um, in addition to that, actually um, I did see an article recently um, talking about how Curse City was slated for November 2020. Oh. It's actually it's listed in, yeah, in, the, wow. in the War Scrolls. I did not even notice that. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, that's how far behind they are, and that's probably why we're not getting a second printing, was that we were already behind, and then something like the Ever Given um, pushed it even further back. So it's unfortunate, and I feel bad for pretty much everyone involved, people who still want to get it, uh, Games Workshop who's not able to meet the demands of their customers, and the people who like to argue on the internet. Um, yes. <laughs> the valiant few taking right. to the Reddit threads right now. I think the big issue that people have been going, because GW has kind of pulled this sort of thing before. They've had things come out, and then, surprise, it's a limited edition thing. Yeah. But one of the big issues that people have had is that um, a lot of the mentions on the Warhammer community pages have been deleted, yeah. saying it's part of the core. Like They kind of retroactively Orwellian style went back and started saying, we yeah. never said that, which is, is never a good look. Um, no, it's not. But also, it's clarification. So... It should have been a press release saying, oh, hey, this is happening. Hey, we're going to have to delete all the other mentions of it for new people who might be seeing that article for right. the first time, right? Um, and it makes sense, like, in the grand scheme of things, but it has to be discussed and talked about with the, the people that are already in the know, right? Because um, editing someone's comment uh, without telling them about it or without telling... The audience with it is a great way to get people like it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And as we know, people on the internet take everything rationally, and you can keel at all <laughs> yeah. times. 
What's what's the um, the bit from MIB? Like a person is rational, but a mob is not. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's the internet. Um, the internet. So so this isn't just completely centered on Games Workshop. Uh, we are currently going through delays in all of Fantasy Flight and Atomic Mass Games products, um, and stuff having to be readjusted due to shipping issues and production issues, um, all centered around the pandemic and the ever given just kind of <laughs> piling on the yeah, If they got any supplies whatsoever from um, anywhere in Asia, it's probably going to be delayed. Um, and they are working on it. And I'm doing my best to keep everyone updated and all of the Facebook groups about delays and changes in release dates and all of sort of business, but um, it's a lot and it's constantly evolving. So bear with us as we try to get you the latest information and uh, always tune in to Fridays when we yeah. got gossip and things like that. We'll talk about stuff. We'll yeah. talk uh, we'll talk about Q eventually at least. We'll get we'll get oh oh yeah yeah, we'll yeah. Get back to Q. Yeah. We'll go down we'll do top ten TNG episodes. Well or should we just do top ten Star Trek episodes? Because there's some Voyager ones that I like. Oh no so well there's great episodes across all the series. Yeah. Like the Magnificent Seven with Ferengi. Mm. Um, Speaking of acquisitions of things. Yeah. And purchases. Uh, so, so let's actually bridge both those things together and start with War Games Atlantic. Uh, I'm going with my favorite first. Yeah, I wonder why you picked that one up. Lizard Men. Um, <laughs> so these are the War Games Atlantic classic fantasy lizard men. That is a title. That's a lot of names. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a multi part kit. Um, and the cool thing about it is that you can make these lizard men for both fantasy and sci-fi. Uh, these would work great within Frostgrave as bad guys or part of your war band. These would work great as proxies for crew, um, which I personally like because they have these like little rifles with them, these old-timey rifles. Um, and they can also work really well for proxies for lizard men um, in Warhammer Fantasy or Age of Sigmar. Um, they have multiple different head options. They're basically, they're all based on iguanas, um, but they do have different head styles, like uh, chameleon heads, if you want to make chameleon skinks out of them. Um, they also have like some sci-fi helmets and things like that in there. Um, it's a really great quick kit, and it's 24 uh, fantastic looking lizard men uh, for $36. Yeah, which is a steal. And I've yeah. put together some of these War Games Atlantic kits. I haven't done that one, but I've done the dwarf one and a couple yeah. of the other ones. These are really quality plastic models. Yeah. Normally when you get kind of the, if you're using these as stand-ins for something like GW or you're petting that premium, you think, oh, it's going to have mold lines or it's not going to be cut as well yeah. or something. These are actually on par at least with yeah. a lot of the other kits I've built. They're really nice. And these kind of also harken back to the older Game Workshop design, mm -hmm. which is um, more of the posability, right? Right. Like, the the mono pose. Exactly. Yeah, so like head swaps, arm poses, arm swaps, like all that sort of stuff is possible in War Games Atlantic stuff. So people who like to mod things and like to, oh, have a little bit more control over the creativity of their models, uh, the War Games Atlantic are great. And also, um, buying one box of uh, classic fantasy lizard men uh, gets you one friendship of John Galvin. So it's true. Yeah, you know. a little token inside the box. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, so it led us into our Star Trek Next Generation Q uh, shenanigans was the uh, War Games Atlantic Napoleon Wars from the Revolution to Abdic... <laughs> the titles of these are so long. Yeah. Um, so these are Prussian Reserve 1813 to 1815. Um, forgive my long-winded uh naming. Um, well, that's but, the name. It's... Yeah. But, uh, so once again, uh, War Games Atlantic doesn't make just uh, fantastic looking lizard people, but it also uh, makes quality historical models. Um, yeah. And a lot of them. Yeah. There's 60 models in this box for 35 bucks. Yeah. 60. Which is astounding, right? It's, that's um, so many. And their historical work is fantastic, right? You can't really beat the price uh, per model. And once again, uh, this is what led us into our Star Trek discussion about that episode where Riker becomes Q for a day. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, there you go, Emily. There's your tie-in. Let, <laughs> let us know in the comments your favorite Star Trek episode. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so uh, these guys, once again, are great for Napoleonics. Uh, they are also great for Imperial Guard conversions, yeah. or Astra Militarum, as they are known now. 
You can do head swaps, like you can take all the heads out and swap right. them with your Imperial Guard guys. Uh, you can just swap the weapons out. Uh, it's really great. These guys are absolutely fantastic. So, and if you're playing Astro Military, you know you're going to need 60 guys to take on two or three yeah. Space Marines, maybe. So this is a good quality thing. Yeah. So, once again, I always recommend these board games Atlanta kits. We carry all of them. Um, they range from giant spiders to historicals to science fiction. I'm saying um, giant spiders aren't historicals. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at some point. I mean, they yeah. were in Wild Wild West. Come on now. Jim West. Jim West. <laughs> um, no, so, I mean, giant spiders were probably around yeah. in uh, when we had those, like, six-foot centipedes that mm. on my nightmares. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. yeah uh, thanks the, for that. Yes, yes. <laughs> all right. And so the next thing on the list that we had to co uh, come out this week is we have some supplements to the Legend of the Five Rings. So we have Fields of Victory. And Blood of the Lioness. So, these basically, one is Adventure Path, one is basically a supplement in terms of like giving you information and uh, more or less filling out um, how to be a member of the Lion Clan. Um, Zach asked me before the stream started, what is Legends of the Five yes. Rings? <laughs> I have my interest in this. I remember the card game, I think, in the 90s. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's the last time I saw this. So. And so. Uh, easiest way to describe it is it is mythological um, feudal Japan where the the nation is divided into clans which kind of operate as a class system. So um, the Lion Clan is your samurai caste. So these are going to be your knightly orders, right? Like basically honor, glory, um, heavy armored combat in the um, uh, this area of feudal Japan. Um, or, sorry, it's it's called, like, Rokugan. Uh, Matt Miller's yes. going to... Uh, Somebody is correcting us. Yeah. Right so, now. That's um, a great take. Great art. Yeah. Turn into. The artwork is fantastic on all of these. Um, my favorite clan out of the major clans uh, either has to be Crane Clan or Crab Clan. And those are, like, the two polar opposites. It's the nobility and um, the barbarians. Um, but Lion Clan has always had this kind of great fantasy to it, where it gets you to play that that samurai warrior. Yes. That honorable duelist, the, like, general into battle kind of thing. Um, you can yeah. play uh, Kiyoshaka's girlfriend from that episode of Avatar. Oh, no, it's Kiyoshi's Warriors, and her name is... It begins with an A, I think. Mm, Skipper, you know the name. Yeah, yeah I see he's <laughs> watching. He's <laughs> <laughs> um, so, these books came out... Um, they're limited, uh, so basically, if you're interested in them, make sure to call or um, get us to reserve you those books however you want. Uh, yeah. I really love the Legend of the Five Rings universe. They've done a great uh, job basically expanding and adding to the lore through the RPGs and the uh, LCG that they have going on. So, Yeah. All right. Cool. What's next? You want me to take one? You've been doing a, a lot of talking here. Yeah. You want me to take one? Let's see. Out of the three that we've got here, I'm going to go for this one. Yeah. <laughs> What a surprise I'm for the Age of Sigmar thing. Uh, so this is the starter set. It's the new starter set for Warhammer Underworlds. Uh, this is one of the... Uh, this is my face now. Um, so the way this works is there's been a multiple starter sets, basically, per expansion, Beast Grave, that kind of thing. Uh, this is one that just is sort of outside of the storyline. Yeah, line. it is your generic. This is, yeah, this is your generic. If you've looked at Warhammer Underworlds and you're just wondering... I want to get started, but now it's three or four years in. There's a lot of different expansions and things. How do I jump in? This is how you jump in. Yep. This is a set that they put together specifically. It's, uh, it's Stormcast and Nighthaunt. We joke, you know, two top-tier armies ready to go. Um, <laughs> I like Stormcast, so, you know, we've got that. But uh, it comes with everything you need to play. Um, the figures are the easy-to-build ones that yeah. you don't have to have any glue or anything. They're cool-looking figures, and they do work in Age of Sigmar if you want to throw it into like an army like Absolutely. That, or a war cry army or something else. Um, but the biggest thing is here, this is, with Underworlds, it's a card game and a tabletop miniature game combined. It's kind of a hybrid sort of thing. Uh, and this comes with all the cards that you need to get started to play. So you don't yeah. have to worry about well, anything else, really. Not only the cards, but it gives you the board to play on, the dice, and the tokens. So, um, like with me, I just got back into Warhammer Underworlds um, by picking up uh, the Starblood Stalkers. I was, was going to say, yeah. was it the Seraphon? Yeah, it was. Weird. Um, 
But those kits don't give you a board to play on. They don't give you dice to roll with um, right. and all that. And so this is great for returning players like me who need to, you know, refresh their inventory, yes. as it were. Uh, get more boards, get get a dice set, all that sort of business. And then it will give you more options, those generic cards. So the cards in there, um, part of the aspect of Warhammer Underworlds is that it is a collectible card game. Mm -hmm. So every pack you buy has cards that can be used by any war game. And so, however, they rotate out at the end of every season. So like every right. season there's a new list of what's usable. The nice thing about this generic set is that all the cards in here should be usable always. Pretty much forever. Yeah. yeah. Barring any weird errata or anything. Yeah. That takes and, one out. and so that is an absolutely great idea to have, especially for someone who is new to Underworlds, knowing that nothing in here is going to go out of date. Yes. You know, so if they love it, they can get playing and start adding in some of the newer stuff, or if they just want to be casual, they get to keep this like deck for forever. Right. It's yeah. a standalone game. Yeah. Which is what's really nice about it. If you have very little interest in the whole universe and you just want to try just a different type of board game, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to the next thing, Blood Bowl. Mm, football. But smaller. Um, <laughs> so this is Blood Bowl Death Zone. Um, it is the ultimate Blood Bowl companion, exclamation point. Um, so... Death Zone is a mode of Blood Bowl. Um, it is designed to speed things up, take a right. normal game from that would normally be, what, two to four hours, and bring it down to an hour. It also makes leveling up easier, and uh, it gives you the option on playing on a smaller pitch, uh, which is called the Sevens Pitch. So this is the XFL to the NFL. Basically. Yes. Yeah. And so um, it's really exciting, and it also gives you some stuff to play in the regular edition of Blood Bowl. It expands on some rules and such, which is really cool. Um, so I definitely recommend this for any Blood Bowl fans. Um, one of the other things that I don't get to talk about a lot is that the Blood Bowl artwork in itself is really great. Um, it really is. It's so it's different than the standard Games Workshop, very rendered, photorealistic style. Um, where Blood Bowl is a little bit more comic booky, whimsical, art mm -hmm. style. Um, I really like it. it. It matches the the feel of the game quite a bit. Yeah, any game where you have a uh, game of fantasy football being played between snotlings and halflings. Yeah. It's going to have to take itself a little while. Right, and that's basically the puppy bowl and kitten bowl together, <laughs> except... It's so adorable. You make them wear giant rubber gloves. Um, yeah. All right, so... Uh, one more release, uh, which a lot of people have been working on, well, for Games Workshop, uh, is Adeptus Titanicus Loyalist Legios. So, that was easier to say than a lot yeah. of the other ones. I was like, that uh, sounded like such a mouthful. <laughs> um, so, Loyalist Legios is a, a supplement to Adeptus Titanicus. Um, it basically covers... It gives you more armies to play with, right? So basically, if you want to play one of the uh, quote-unquote good guy teams, people who are loyal to the Emperor... <laughs> the good guys in 40k. Um, this will help expand those lists of options to play as. Um, it also basically... Uh, oh, it gives you night houses, legion type uh, things, more stratagems, more war gear, all that sort of good stuff. It's basically and, a big expansion book for yeah. the uh, Titanicus in the Horus Heresy time setting. Correct. Um, and it is a massive tome for $50. Uh, yeah, it, is. it is. It is a thick book. Um, I expect this one to go pretty quickly. I'm also releasing this week with the rest of the stuff um, is the uh, just the Aedipus Titanicus rulebook. Mm -hmm. So if you never picked up like the giant starter set um, and you want to get into it, it's great to just pick up the rulebook on the side and get learning. Um, there's also additional releases for Underworlds. The Crimson Court is dropping this weekend, uh, unfortunately. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. It, it was like a vampire being hit with sunlight. It is just evaporating. Dust in the wind. Yeah. Um, we are attempting to get more, um, but we have no guarantees on when they will arrive, uh, but we will try our best to um, get it back in stock as soon as possible. I think some big pre-orders go up this weekend too, right? Correct. Some extra stuff. So be, once again, since you're hearing about all these things that are going out of stock before they even yeah. hit the shelves, hit those pre-orders up because this weekend is Bellacore, right? Yes, it's Bellacore. Um, so this weekend we have Bellacore, um, four the new Warbands, yes, um, and two new characters, uh, Cruel Gast Cruciator and um, some Stormcast, who nobody cares. 
<laughs> what some podcast dude that I'm already going to pre-order? Uh, Garrus Stormsteel. I yes, believe yeah, he's in a book. One of the few books I haven't read, but they released his silhouette, and it was the exact cover of the book. Yeah. That's why immediately I was like, "Oh, well, that's a Stormcast guy. It's a Lord Celestine." If, if and it is a Lord Celestine. If you want to get on the Marvel Three Point Hero landing, that mm-hmm. is Garrus Steel Soul. Absolutely. Um, in a nutshell, he. Uh, I think his rules specifically target Beasts of Chaos. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. It's a new Stormcast model. I'm happy with it. Um, so, with all of that, uh, we have all these new releases. Um, we also have a new Magic set pre-releasing. Uh, this weekend. This yes. weekend. Zach. All right. I've got to hold it up. It's called Harry Potter. And yeah. The I was like, uh, I was, I was gonna say, <laughs> you're a wizard, Zach. Oh no. Uh, Specifically, we have set boosters, which is this. Not the regular draft boosters, just the set boosters and the pre-release kits that are available. I believe the set boosters are at 110 and the pre-release kits are 25, 20 or 25. So, um, this is a new magic set uh, a lot of people have been waiting for. It is definitely uh, taking on cues from Harry Potter. There are... (laughs) <laughs> there are five, more colleges. or less, yeah, colleges, colleges of um, colleges. that all specialize in different things. Um, you can be a bombastic uh, musical sound wizard in Prismari. Uh, you can be a archaeomancer, so uh, like take Indiana Jones and Gandalf and wrap them together. Um, there's that one. So Larry's buddy got movie. Yeah. yeah. Quandrix is math wizardry, which math is already wizardry, so it makes sense. Um, what is it? Silver Quill? I believe you have one of the Silver Quill ones yeah. with you. Weaponized wordsmiths. I do like that one. Yeah, yeah. They've got sweet uniforms, and then, too. Kill them softly with your words. <laughs> and finally, there is Witherbloom, which is like your biology kids on uh, steroids. It's that kid that always brings catapulters yeah. to class, you know? It, like, oh, absolutely. Okay, found that. So, um... We've been getting calls about pretty release all week. Uh, you're able to pick up your stuff today, um, so I expect it to be pretty busy. Uh, if you are looking for Strixhaven stuff, um, if you call and uh, you get redirected or busy line, um, just know that we are incredibly busy fulfilling orders, and uh, as of right now, we have plenty of stock of uh, items, so come on in and just come pick it up. Yeah, come get some neat stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff releasing. Yeah. And, uh, once again, we're open for safe play. We've got some events coming on this weekend, yeah. so be sure to come uh, and check them out. We have a Middle Earth Strategy Battles uh, uh, Speaking event. of Gandalf. Yeah, um, going on this Saturday. I want to say we also have a Super Show tournament going on this weekend. Um, we also have... Super Show, I believe, is May 1st. Oh, is it May 1st? Okay. Yes, it looks like it's May 1st. Got it. Okay, so that's coming up soon. And then we have a big Age of Sigmar... Um, part of our series event happening on Sunday. Yes. So Sunday will be pretty busy in terms of table space, so if you're looking to get a catch-up um, or a pickup game, um, make sure you check in advance whether or not we have room for everyone. Um, but I think we should be fine for, for most folks. Um, it just might be busier than normal. Yes. And if you're looking to play Age of Sigma or not at the tournament, the league is still going on. Yep. We've had a lot of people scoring. Um, it's going pretty well so far. I think we've had 10 people who reported games last week. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people who weren't able to the first week but are coming in on the second. So on Thursdays is kind of the official, unofficial meetup day. Yep. But uh, use the Discord or the Facebook to find games. There's plenty of people looking to play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and then I want to say that that covers our most recent uh, events for the weekend. I think that's it. So do I put this on my head and it tells me which one of these I am? How this works? See, I would have thought you would have been a band kid. I, I was a band kid. Yep, see? You're a Lorehold! I was a band kid, so, uh... Oh, the Lorehold sounds so lame. Man. No, Lorehold Lor- 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 has Gatling what? Scrolls. What? Gatling Gun know. Scrolls. It's Prismari that are all the musicians. Okay, that one's cool. Uh, yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's, that's right. Yeah. Lorehold is the history yeah. people. That's why as they have as, the Gatling Gun as long Scrolls. As I'm not a math musician, or math musician, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I would have been in Lorehold because, um... I was good at Nerd. history. Yeah. I mean, I was good at history, but... we all but talk about game stuff. Yeah. Like, Nerd. I'm pretty sure I would have been, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, Silver Quill? 
the writing. Yeah, uh, plus they have super sweet uniforms is one of their big things that they talk about in there. They're like super stylish. That's the most important thing when you're playing Magic the Gathering is style. Hey, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> I prefer style over substance sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, come check out the school products. Um, let us know. Uh, leave some questions if you want in the comments below. We'll get to them. I always check these things about an hour later and everything. So we'll now try everyone's to very up. interested in the fact that you're a band kid. Oh yeah, no, Jake, Jake, you were in band with me. <laughs> <laughs> you were in my section. You played the same instrument as me. Were, were you a trumpeter? No. How dare you, sir? <laughs> Shut up, baritone. Uh, bass clarinet. Uh, bass clarinet. Uh, yeah. Bass clarinet. That's the only one to play. Yeah. I was the bass clarinet. I even yeah, marched so the bass clarinet. It's all about the bass anyway. It's all really? About the bass? The yeah, bass? <laughs> Alright, all right. guys. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, make sure to pre-order all these wonderful products that are... Uh, the Games Workshop releases tomorrow. The uh, Legend of the Five Rings stuff today. Same with the Magic and the War Games Atlantic. Yeah. So, until next time, everybody have a wonderful time. Bye. Bye, Bye guys.